भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत जीवनरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जीवती नष्ट प्रयेश भद्रेश भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति राधाष्टमी next friday is radhashtami we couldn't get the speaker on the last minute so unfortunately i have to speak today reading from shrimad bhagavatam chapter 10 10th canto 10th canto shrimad bhagavatam was chapter 30 Samam, the Samam Bonam, Canto 10, Chapter 30, The Gopi Sets for Krishna, Verse Number 28, Where Srimati Radharani's name indirectly mentioned. Anaya Aradito Nunam Bhagavan Harir Iswara Yenno Vihaya Govinda Preto Yamanaya Draha अनया आराधितो नूनम भगवान हरि ईश्वर यन्नो विहाय गोविंद प्रीतो या मनया द्र अनया आराधितो नूनम भगवान हरि ईश्वर यन्नो विहाय गोविंद प्रीतो या मनया द्र टू वर्ड अनया बयहर आराधिता परफेक्टली वर्शिप Noonam, certainly, Bhagavan, the personality of Godhead, Arihi, Lord Krishna, Iswara, the supreme controller, yet in as much as na as Vihaya, rejecting Govinda, Lord Govinda, Preeta, pleased, Yam, Om, Anayat, led, Raha, to a secluded place. Translation by the divine guest, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta, Sons, Popas, Popas, Vijaya. Certainly, this particular Gopi has perfectly worshipped the all-powerful personality of Godhead Govinda, since he was so pleased with her that he abandoned the rest of us and brought her to a secluded place. Please repeat. Certainly, this particular Gopi has perfectly worshipped the all-powerful personality of Godhead Govinda, since he was so pleased with her that he abandoned the rest of us and brought her to a secluded place. What about by his Gopal? Sri Vishnu Chakra, Sri Vishnu Chakra Thakur explains that the word Aradita refers to Sri Madhur Adrani. He comments the sage Sukadev Goswami has tried to tried with all endeavor to keep her name hidden, but now it automatically shines forth from the moon of his mouth that he has spoken her name is indeed her mercy. And thus the word Aradita is like the rumbling of a kettle drum sounded to announce her great good fortune. Although the gopis spoke as if jealous of Sri Madhur Adrani, they were actually ecstatic to see if she had captured Sri Krishna. Sri Vishnu Chakra Thakur quotes the following detailed description of Sri Madhur Adrani's footprints, as given by Sri Rupa Goswami in his Sri Vijwal Nilamani. At the base of the large toe of her, locks, her left foot is the mark of the barley corn. Below that mark is a disc. Below the disc is an umbrella. Below the umbrella is a bracelet. A vertical line extends from middle of her foot to the juncture juncture of her large and second toes. At the base of the middle toe is a lotus. Below that is a flag with a banner, and below the flag is a creeper, together with a flower. At the base of her small toe is an elephant god, and upon her heel is an half moon. Thus, there are eleven marks on her left foot. At the base of large toe of her right foot is a conch shell, and below that is a spear. At the base of the small toe of her right foot is a sacrificial altar. Below that, an earring. Below the earring is a club. Uh, along the base of second, third, fourth, and small toes is the mark of mountain. Below which is a chariot. 
and on the heel is a fish. Thus, altogether, there are 19 distinguishing marks on the soles of Srimati and the Radharani's lotus feet. So, we'll try to understand more about the Srimati Radharani's position and uh, her glories. We'll also look at the Darshan pictures of the Barsana Dham, Lordly Mandir, and uh, Yavat, maybe a little bit. Uh, we'll also the Kirtan of um, Srimad Radharani as Prabhupada sang that a uh, few times. And we'll understand from various uh, scriptures, especially from Chaitanya Siddhartha Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself is speaking. The first first definition as we are seeing here, Prabhupada explained in many places, especially Anaya Aradito Iti Radha. So that is the definition of Radha. I means she is the topmost worshipper. No one can excel her in the worship of worship of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. Uh, Prabhupada explained uh, in, uh, in many places, especially in Canto 3, Srimad Bhagavatam, also in the Mother Devahuti's verse, one of the verse, Canto 3, chapter 25, verse number 7, also Prabhupada explains that. Srimad Radharani, she is the topmost servitor of Krishna. So her business is to keep pleased always Krishna. That is the symbolic representation. Radha means Anaya Aradhyate. She is serving the best service. Therefore, Krishna is very much fond of Radharani because she gives the best service to Krishna in so many ways. She has got 64 qualifications that is mentioned. Therefore, she is so, I mean to say, pleasing to Krishna. Anaya Aradhyate Iti Radha. So our business is also like that. We are eternal servant of Krishna. We should give, render, we should render service to the best of the capacity. That is our real constitution position. But here Devati says that Bhuman Asad Indriya Tarshana. At the present moment in this material world, we are busy to enjoy this material senses. So this is our position. So that's why one must, uh, one must utilize the senses, utilize everything in the service of uh, Radha and Krishna. Now, uh, we'll see from the uh, Sri Jagadana and the Pandit describing Srimad Radharani and how, because the famous verse, as we know, who is the Srimad Radharani? Another way, many ways there are Srimad Radharani's thousand names, Sahasra Namavali, so written by Raghunath Das Goswami. There are many books also. Raghunath Das Goswami has written many composing, Vilapa Kusumanjali, Sahasana, Stotra, um, many prayers in Rupa Goswami also written. And even Lord Shiva has given also, he has written uh, Stava Stotra, uh, Radha Kataksha Stava uh, Raj, uh, 108 verses are so explaining. So, there are so many different Acharya, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami has written, but we will not have time to go through all that. It will be much more and very elaborate. Uh, so, uh, and Pramanas are also there. We discussed in yesterday's Friday's class about the Radharani's Radha name in pretty much in all Vedas, uh, Puranas, Upanishads, everywhere Radharani's name is mentioned. But we will cover mainly from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates. And uh, yeah, that will be the today's main topic. So here Jagadananda Pandit is saying, Akanda Advaya Grana Sarva Tattva Saar, Sai Tattva Danda Paranama Bharapar. Repeatedly offer respect to the indivisible, non-dual jnana, the essence of all the tattvas. That is absolute truth. Sri Krishna tattva and Radha tattva. Sei tattva kabu dui Radha Krishna rupe kabu eka para para chaitanya sarupe. This tattva is sometimes two as Radha and Krishna. Sometimes one form of chaitanya, superior to the best. The one supreme tattva is always one. It is not different from, from its shakti at all. Though there is no difference, there are two are always different. All the Vedas glorify the Veda and Abeda is inconceivable. The Sekti of the Lord has three forms. And this is the so Lord Krishna Surup Sekti expands into three different ways eternally. So that details will be given. It will be uh, uh, interesting to know. Some ways Sandini and Aladini, some Sandini Sekti, one Surup Sekti of the Lord Krishna. Originally, Lord Krishna is one, but he expanded himself into two, two, to taste the rasa. 
Radha Krishna. One meaning of Radha Rani is transformation of ecstatic love. Is Srimad Radha Rani. So Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikriti Ahladini Sekti. That Ahladini Sekti. Krishna's Swarup Sekti transformed into three different ways. Some with Sandhani and Aladini. That Aladini is nothing but transformation of love. If one wants to attain spiritual nature, one wants to attain Vaikuntha, unless he is bestowed, that living and Jiva is bestowed with the Ladani potency, there is no way he can attain Vaikuntha. That is being given in Chaitanya Chirtamrita. So that's why Ladani Sekti, Srimad Radharani's mercy is very much required. There's a lot of Krishna's mercy coming through Srimad Radharani and coming through, especially our representative who are that spiritual masters. This is also been explained a few times in the last few days. Prakash is Tattva. You can understand uh, your uh, actual energy. Somebody has to uh, enlighten, reveal it. The light, the fan, so the sun, revealing the actual energy of the Lord. Then only we can know, we can understand. So same way in the heart, our original Krishna consciousness is there, but somebody has to reveal it. That is a spiritual master. That is why it's called Prakash Tattva. Sekti Prakash. So Mantra Prakash. So he will the one, even though mantra is there, Hare Krishna Mahamadha, everybody is chanting. But unless the spiritual master initiates and gives the Sekti, empowers, then it won't reveal, it won't actually enlighten. The fire of Krishna consciousness won't germinate. So that's why he's called Guru. Uh, Om Agnana Timiram Dasya Gnananjana Salakaya. The Timira, the Dandaka, Guru has to remove. So that's why he's called Sekti Prakasa Tattva, so Dham Prakasa, even the holy Dham also can only be revealed by the spiritual master, by the Sekti, the holy name also, revelation by the Nam Prakasa, Dham Prakasa, Sekti Prakasa, Murti Prakasa, Archa Vigraha also, because he is the one who is installing, spiritual master is the one who is installing the deity, whose deity is, it is not our deity, so, so that's why we have to, before we do any worship in the temple, even at home, for that matter, we first pray to spiritual master. Through Guru we do. All the service, whatever we are doing to the deity is through Guru. Guru's service. It is not our service. We have a conditioned body. Pure devotee of the Lord, spiritual master, uh, is the one through him, because he is pure. Through him we can worship. On behalf him we do service. So that's what, that's why Srimad Radharani's mercy is coming through the spiritual master. And that's what we have to understand. So that's why Sri Radha Krishna Pranay Vikriti Ahaladini Sekti Ekatmana Bhuvi Deha Vedo Gatautu. Originally they were one. They separated to exchange, to taste the rasa. Ekatmana Bhuvi Pura Deha Vedo Gatautu. Chaitan Akyam Aduna Prakatam Aduna Ekyam Akyam. So Radha Bhava Suvalitam Naomi Krishna Guru. So, Krishna is one originally and he expanded into two, as Radha and Krishna eternally. And then again to actually Lord Krishna and he appeared in Dwaraka, uh, Dwapara Yuga, three things he missed. He was there. He wants to taste three things, desiring to taste the how much Srimad Radha is feeling that love and how much happiness he is getting and the, all the ecstatic symptoms she is feeling. All these three things he wants to desire. He was desiring Krishna as a desire, so he appeared as Sri Chaitanya Again, Radha and Krishna combined as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the mood, in the complexion of Sri Mother Radha and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's why Radha Bhava Suvalitam Naomi Krishna's room. That is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, so now the Jagadana Pandit explains this Radhani Sekti, how important it is. The Sekti of the Lord has three forms the form of knowledge, Samvit, Sandhani, and Aladhani. The Lord, by His Sekti, reveals Himself. The Lord, energizing His Sekti, produces all perfection. The Lord, there is always existence and action. The Sekti and Sekti Man are never separate. So, Radha and Krishna are never separate. Giving two forms to the Hladini and Vastu. Vastu means Sekti Man. Hladini means Sekti. Radha Rani and Krishna is Sekti Man, Vastu. Radha and Krishna perform extraordinarily, extraordinary pastimes in Vraja. So Radha is transformation of Krishna's love as Hladini. I just described. Radha Krishna Pranayera Vikriti Ladani Avichincha Sekti Radha Krishna Unmadini. Radha the inconceivable Sekti bewilders Krishna. So there is another name. Krishna Vancha Pura Sekti is Radharani. 
Srimad Radharani is the one who completes, the fulfills the desires of Krishna. So, so many names like that are there. And that's 108 names or 1008 names are there for Radharani. Endless glories. Further, the great Sikhi is capable of doing the impossible. It is involved in making what is without transformation. That is, Lord becomes transformed. So, the Supreme Tattva cannot be perceived by logician. Thus, an unprecedented objection arises. It is a contradiction. You will see this is a very interesting contradiction. Very nice to hear. The logicians cannot understand the answer. Even after profound thoughts for hundreds and thousands of years. That's why the bhakti can only be understood by the, by, by, through the pure devotee of the Lord. Not by logic and argument. Bhaktiya, bhaktiya maam abhijanati. Bhaktiya bhagavata grahitaya. Through Srimad Bhagavatam and Parsan Bhagavatam. Only you can understand. Not by logic uh, argument, you can. Tarka Apratishta Srutayo Vibhinna Naso Munijas Matam Nabinam Dharmasya Tatam Nihitam Guhaya Maha Janasa Yena Gatasa Bhanga. By Tarka, by logic argument, we can't understand Bhakti. Only by Maha Janas, Sadhu, the spiritual master. Here, Jagadana Pandit says, Only the person to whom Krishna gives mercy can know this uh, inconceivable potency. Oh, others cannot know even if they contemplate one hundred and thousand of years. Radha is transformation of Krishna's love as Adini Sikhi. From the love arises bewilderment of the heart. Becoming two entities. It is interesting. Pay attention. Sadhu Savadhan. Becoming two entities. Radha and Krishna manifest love. When love arises, transformation takes place. Before they manifest as before they manifested as two entities, there was no transformation. Then how did one entity become two? This is all contradiction you will see here. From Aladini arises two separate bodies. How did Aladini exist? And how did it create the difference and the differentiation? There is only one answer to this question. In Krishna, the tattva who is beyond and space, space and time eternally. There is no consideration of time and space in spiritual tattva. See, the time and space exert their influence in the material realm. In the material world only, your past, present, future. Bhagavad Gita, the first instruction Krishna is telling Arjuna. So, you are there, I was there, all these battlefields on the Kurukshetra or um, Bhishma Dhrana, everybody was there in the past, even there now, in the future also they will be there. Krishna is telling that. So, that means the soul is eternal. In the material world, this past, present, future. In spiritual world, there is no past, there is no future. It always time is current. So that's why it's very difficult because we are so much engrossed in this material world. It's difficult to comprehend and understand the what goes on in the spiritual world. So that Jagadam Pandit is trying to give us a glimpse of that. See, time and space exert their influence in the material world. Its nature is to be aware of past and future. But there is no past or future in spiritual tattva. There is only eternal present. Spiritual tattva is beyond words and mind. It is certain that there will be fault in describing spiritual tattva by words or mind. But there is no fault in the spiritual tattva. Oh brother, everything is resolved by achincha sekti. So that's why our, our tattva is, our sampradaya principle is, achincha veda abeda tattva. Simultaneously, inconceivably, simultaneously one and different. Achincha. Because spiritual tattva is always inconceivable, unless only by bhakti, by pure devotion from the spiritual master and sadhu and mahajana, you can understand. Otherwise, it is inconceivable. There is no pre there is no previous or later in the spiritual realm. It is always fresh, and ever everything is intoxicated with bliss. One who see one sees simultaneously within this tattva unlimited and limited state. There is no nature of this tattva. That is the nature of this tattva. The astonishing quality of this tattva is that it is shelters contrary qualities. Aladini Sekti has no beginning but, it, but is skillful in actions. Before Chaitanya's birth, Radha and Krishna were two entities, both transformed by Prema, took birth on earth. Tattva, which is eternally present, is devoid of faults of time. Considering the faults due to time is fit for the material realm. So thus Radha and Krishna becoming one has now appeared as my Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. So that's why you can't, uh, it's uh, very difficult. Uh, who was first, Radha and Krishna or Chaitanya? Do not waste time uselessly in such consideration. I have said that in spiritual realm, everything is present. 
in the present time. Be careful in speculating about Chaitanya and Krishna. The two, two tattvas exist simultaneously eternally. That uh, it is mentioned by Bhakti Nath Thakur also in his books, in other books also, by Rupa Goswami and other books also is mentioned. Radha and um, the Krishna's past times are eternally going on in Bhavna Vrindavan, in Golok Vrindavan. At the same time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's past times also eternally going on at the same time in same Golok Vrindavan. So that's why they are eternally existent. You can't say that how come Krishna is there, how come Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is there. So uh, it is inconceivable. That's why uh, Jagadama Pandit is telling. Simultaneously, eternally. Radhini Shakti is the transformation of love. I know that the two tattvas exist simultaneously. The tattva has now appeared in the world as Chaitanya. He performs Sankirtan, wandering on the bank of Ganga. Hmm. In this way, we have to understand uh, how this tattva is uh, very, very confidential and it is inconceivable. Hmm. Now, uh, let's understand more from um, how these uh, three desires, as Lord Krishna himself is describing, uh, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is describing, Krishna Asparas Goswami is describing in Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Leela, chapter 4. These are described. Once Lord Krishna considered within his heart, everyone says that I am in a complete bliss, full of all rasas. All the world derives pleasure from me. So, everybody wants Krishna. Everybody is deriving pleasure. Everybody is attracted to Krishna. But Krishna is attracted to someone else. Everybody is feeling so much pleasure as Parvam. But Krishna is feeling so much pleasure and is attracted to someone else. That is Srimad Radharani. So now that's what Krishna is going to describe now. One who has hundred times more qualities than me could give pleasure to my mind. Is there anyone who can give me that pleasure? Yes. One more qualified, one more qualified than me is impossible to find in this world. But in Radha alone, I feel the presence of one who can give me pleasure. So that's why Prabhupada in Radha asked me lectures repeatedly said, Okay, anything we want of us, we want to serve, we want to offer ourselves. At the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. So you don't directly serve Krishna. Always offer through Srimad Radharani. The flower, the fruit, whatever we are offering, that is, we offer through spiritual master. So Prabhupada, Guru, they will offer to Srimad Radharani. Always, don't think that we are offering. So that's why in a few places it is mentioned. By simply chanting Guru Pranam Mantra, offering is done. By just simply offering it to Guru, so the offering is also done in one sense. If you are very quick and some emergency, we do that also. So, because the Guru is not, he doesn't accept, he doesn't take it for himself, for his enjoyment. He offers it to Radha and Krishna. So, that is the principle always. So, although my beauty defeats the beauty of 10 million cupids, although it is unequal and unsurpassed, although it gives pleasure to the three worlds, seeing Radharani gives pleasure to my eyes. The vibration of my transcendental fruit attracts the whole world, three worlds. But my ears are enchanted by the sweet words of Srimati Radharani. Although the my body lends fragrance to the entire creation, the scent of Radharani's limbs captivates my mind and heart. Although the entire creation is full of different tastes about me, I am charmed by the nectarian taste and lips of Srimati Radharani. And although my touch is fuller than 10 million moons, I am refreshed by the touch of Srimati Radhika. Thus, although I am the source of happiness for the entire world, the beauty and attributes of Srimad Radhika are my life and soul. In this way, my affectionate feelings of Srimad Radharani may be understood, but on analysis, I find them contradictory. My eyes are fully satisfied when I look upon Srimad Radharani, but by looking upon me, she becomes even more advanced in satisfaction. So that's why Krishna is thinking how much more she is getting. So he has he developed three desires. That's what Krishna is describing here. The flute-like murmur of the bamboos rubbing against one another steals Radharani's consciousness. For she thinks it is to be sound of my flute. And she embraces a tamal tree, mistaking it for me. I have got an embrace of Sri Krishna. She thinks now my life is fulfilled. Thus she remains immersed in pleasing Krishna, taking the trees in her arms. When a favorable breeze carries to her fragrance of my body, she is blinded by love and tries to fly into the breeze. When she tastes the beetle chewed by me, she merges an ocean of joy and forgets everything else. Even with hundreds of mouths, I could not express the transcendental pleasure she derives from my association. Seeing the lust of her complexion after our pastimes together, I forget my own identity in happiness. Thus, the sage Bharata has said that the mellows of lover and beloved are equal, but he does not know the mellows of my Vrindavan. 
the happiness i feel when meeting ravarani is 100 times greater than the happiness i get from meeting others my dear auspicious ravarani your body is the source of all beauty your face bears the aroma of lotus flower your sweet word defeats the vibrations of the cuckoo your limbs are cooler than the pulp of sandalwood all my transcendental senses are overwhelmed in ecstatic pleasure by tasting you or completely decorated by beautiful qualities our eyes are enchanted by the beauty of lord krishna the enemy of kamsa our body thrills in pleasure at his touch our ears are always attracted by his sweet voice our nostrils are enchanted by his fragrance our tongue anchors the nectar of his soft lips in this way you can dis- you can understand how much uh, krishna is eager i am always eager to taste the joy that shrimad radharani derives from me in spite of various efforts i have not been able to taste it but my desire to relish it that pleasure increases as i smell its sweetness formerly appeared in this world as, to taste the mellows as krishna is telling basically in proper way i tasted the mellows of pure love in various ways i taught devotion service that spring from devotees spontaneous love by demonstrating it with my past times but these three desires of mine were not satisfied for one cannot enjoy them in a contrary position unless i accept the luster of ecstatic love of sri radhika these three desires cannot be fulfilled therefore assuming radharani sentiments and bodily complexions i shall descend to fulfill these three desires we can understand this uh, significance of how much krishna is desiring to taste krishna is desiring uh, to taste now uh, the will before describing further chetan mahaprabhu is asking ragna um, ramanand roy who is lalita sakhi mentioned a little bit differently in a few places lalita uh, lalita sakhi and vishaka sahi who are the associate of radharani simad radharani appeared as rupa damodar go swami and ramanand roy uh, in some places it says lalita is uh, ramanand roy in some places it says vishaka is ramanand roy so by different acharyas in chetan sirtamrata now oh, there is a beautiful past times in yavat mm-hmm. so yavat is a place where ravel is the place where smrt radharani is born uh, in a, she appeared in the lotus flower and uh, rishabhanu maharaj was there at uh, near ravel the yamuna river then if he, he found he finds smrt radharani there then lord brahma appears and tells her tells him that he have prayed before uh, for this and then that's why now he got it so then take her home and worship so then rishabhanu maharaj takes and then narodmani comes automatically at that time knowing what's happening as krishna appeared shakti iman appeared very shakti so then he's looking and then he finds rishabhanu maharaj place this is in ravel uh, so that's the birth place and then after marriage to abhimanyu because of the curse from sri ram then she marries seemingly this is all seemingly not really her body doesn't belong to anybody else is only married to krishna that is the whole past time i'm not going to describe that is there in gopal champur great great length it is described pornamasi describing to vrunda devi that how come this is all gopis are married to krishna uh, this cannot be possible this cannot happen i'm bewildered i'm distressed at this uh of the all these family members are trying to arrange marriage for these gopis uh, so there is a whole conversation then pornama tells don't worry i am arranging the illusion seemingly they will get married but they are not really in reality the gopis are only married to krishna that's the whole past time uh, so everything is astonishing of radha and krishna's past times but we will describe this one past time where jetila so after the marriage of with abhimanyu jetila is the mother in law so she never want krishna to be there with radharani so one past time interesting past time in yavat there is a place once jetila came to the point where she could not take it any longer every day radharani has to cook at nandagram krishna would come and interfere jetila had enough she said no more you are not going out to cook you will stay inside shrimad radharani fainted she seemed almost dead they put a piece of cotton in front of her nose these are there was hardly any breath Lalita said she is in her final stage she will die she told Jetila that she was bitten by a black snake you can understand in directly what is black snake means uh, lord krishna referring to separation of krishna jetila panicked she needed a snake doctor a lady one they could not find one they found gargi the daughter of garkomuni gargacharya she could not cure a snake bite but she said her friend was there from a high class mathura brahmin family you can understand where it is going 
She is expert in curing snake bites. Gargi took Jatila to this young lady, very beautiful, very dark skinned. People do not recognize Krishna in disguise. Jatila asked, What is your name? Vidyavali. I can cure any snake bite, no problem. But actually, there is one problem. I heard there is a young man, Krishna, in Nandagram. When young girls go walking in fields or in the forest, he interferes and tries to touch them. He speaks badly to them. This doctor said, If Krishna touched my shadow, it would be too much. Uh, therefore, I cannot cure this. Find someone else. Krishna is acting <laughs> interestingly. I don't want my reputation to be damaged. Jetila fell onto the ground. I surrender my life to you. I will be your servant forever. Just order me. Vidyavali said, I will think about it. After some begging, uh, he said, Yes, but if Krishna comes, I will leave. He came to Yavat, went to Radharani's room. She was motionless. She was hardly breathing. Vidyavali looked at Radharani. This is the serious case. This is a secret procedure. All have to leave the room. Jetila went around chasing all out. Vidyavali locked the room from inside. Radha and Krishna had a wonderful pastor in the room. Jetila was waiting and wondering what's happening. No one came out still. She asked again what's happening. A voice said, I am the snake of Lord Shiva. Jitla asked, what are you doing here? Voice, you are offended Lord Shiva. I will punish you by killing your daughter-in-law. Jitla, how did I offend you? Voice, you speak badly of my Lord. He is Lord Krishna. You make so many blasphemous against Krishna. You say he interferes with Radharani. That is all nonsense. Jitla, punish me. What, what bite Radharani? Voice, if I bite you, you will die in one minute. If I kill your daughter-in-law, you will suffer your entire life. Jetila, what can I do? Voice, you must allow Radharani to cook for Krishna every day. You must stop talking about them in these ways. Jetila, yes, Radharani can go every day at any time. Radharani and Krishna came out. Jetila asked, where is the snake? Vidyavali said, the snake went to Kailash. Jetila asked Radharani to show her gratitude to Vidyavali by giving her a big hug. <laughs> Radharani hesitated, thinking how she could do this in front of her mother-in-law. Just then, Abhimanyu came in and said, you have to. Radharani gave Vidyavali a big hug. On the order of, very, of the very person who tried to stop me from seeing Krishna, I am now embracing him. You can understand how, how interesting this pastime is. Since we described now, we will describe the so more details of uh, this uh, Srimad Radharani's Tattva. Uh, directly Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is asking beautiful verses, uh, amazing verses actually. And then we can understand her tattva. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continues, please do not try to cheat me. Thinking of me as a learned, learned sannyasi, please satisfy my mind by just describing the truth of Radha and Krishna. Rama, Sri Ramananda Rai was a great devotee of the Lord and lover of God. Although his mind could not be covered by Krishna's illusion energy, although he could understand the mind of the Lord, which was very strong and intense, Ramananda Rai's mind became a little agitated. This is the mood, always being humble. Even though Lord may ask, Krishna may ask, always we submit with great humility. Uh, the, that is how we can see here. Ramananda Rai said, I am just a dancing puppet, and you put all, you pull the strings. Whichever way you make me dance, I will dance. My dear Lord, my tongue is just like the stringed instrument. You are its player. Therefore, I simply vibrate whatever arises in your mind. Then Ramananda Rai then began to speak on Krishna Tattva. Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. He said he is personally original Godhead. The source of all incarnation and cause of all causes. The transcendental body of Sri Krishna is eternal and full of bliss and knowledge. He is the son of Nanda Maharaj and is full of opulences and potencies as well as spiritual mellows. Krishna, who is known as Govinda, is the supreme controller. He being an eternal, blissful spiritual body, he is the origin of all. He has no other origin, for he is the prime cause of all causes. Uh, now, Ramananda Rai said, I have thus briefly explained the original form of many more details are there. I am not going because we want to describe about Radharani's glories. Original form of Supreme Personality of God. Now let me describe the position of Srimati Radharani. Krishna has unlimited potencies which can be divided into three main parts. These are spiritual potencies, mainly spiritual potency, material potency, marginal, which means internal energy, marginal, marginal, uh, bhairanga sakti, antaranga sakti, and uh, what is that? Other one. External energy, marginal energy, internal energy. Antaranga sakti, bhairanga sakti, and one more, I forget that term. Marginal potency. 
Jiva, Jiva Sekti, basically, and actual energy is material potency and spiritual potency is internal energy. Originally, one Swarup Sekti that is divided into these ways. That uh, three different ways, like this actual energy, internal energy, marginal energy. The other way is Swambe, Sandani, Ladani. Ladani is Radharani, represented by, and uh, Samvit is Lord Krishna, which is the knowledge potency by which we can only know the, all the aspects, material and spiritual. Uh, when it is all these three, when it is uh, perverted in the material world, these are perverted. Ladani perverted, then we try to enjoy the pleasure we get uh, slimmingly, uh, flickering happiness. That is also by the Ladani Sekti uh, adulterated uh, in this uh, perverted reflection material, we get little teeny happiness. That is all coming from Ladani Sekti. And the same with uh, material energy, also the material knowledge, Sambit, that is Lord Krishna, personally taking charge. But when we submit, when we fully know through spiritual master, Acharyas, then we actually attain the, understand the Sambit Sekti, which Krishna will make us know. Then the Sandini is Lord Balaram, which is existential potency, eternality, uh, that is coming from Lord Balaram. In this way, one Swarup Sekti is divided into Sandini, Sambit, Ladini, and another way is internal energy, marginal energy, external energy. These two different ways. So Ramantra is described further. In other words, there are the, these are all potencies of God, internal, external, marginal. But the internal potency is Lord's personal energy stands over the other two. The original potency of Lord Vishnu is superior or spiritual. And the living entity actually belongs to that superior energy. But there is another energy called the material energy. And this third energy is full of ignorance. Originally, Lord Krishna is Sajidananda Vigra, the transcendental form of eternality and bliss and knowledge. Therefore, his personal potency, the internal potency has three different forms. Aladini is the aspect of bliss. Sandini is the aspect of eternal existence. Uh, some width of cognizance, uh, just described, which is also accepted as knowledge. The potency called Aladini gives Krishna transcendental pleasure. That's why I said that. So, Srimad Radharani has so many different names. Govinda Anandini, she is the topmost giver of pleasure. She attracts Krishna. Mm. Mm. Madana Mohana Mohini. Mm. So, like that, so many different names. Krishna Mahi. Mm. Everything is in her. So, Lord Krishna takes all kinds of transcendental happiness, although he himself is happiness personified. The pleasure released by his pure devotee is also manifested by his personal pleasure potency. The most essential part of this pleasure potency is love of God, prema. Consequently, the explanation of love of Godhead is also a transcendental mellow of full pleasure. The essential part of love of Godhead is called Mahabhava, transcendental ecstasy. That ecstasy is represented by Srimati Radharani. So that's why the, we, get, we come to the bhava. Jiva can only come to the certain stages of bhava, ecstatic transformations. But the, no one can come to this. Even the gopis cannot come. As well as you know, is the only one who has the Mahabhava. Hmm? Adiruda Mahabhava. She has the top, topmost uh, ecstatic transformation, ecstatic symptoms of this stage. Only Chitra Mahaprabhu and Srimad Radharani exhibited this. So that's why she is the topmost. As Rupa Goswami explained in Act of Instruction, last verses 9, 10, 11, and many books like this being glorified. So among the gopis of Vrindavana, Srimad Radharani and another gopi are considered chief. But when we compare the gopis, it appears that Srimad Radharani is the most important because her real feature expresses the highest ecstasy of love. The ecstasy of love experienced by other gopis cannot be compared to that of Radharani. The body of Radharani is a veritable transformation of love of Godhead. She is the dearmost friend of Krishna. And this is known throughout the world. I worship Govinda, primeval lord who resides in his own realm, Goloka with Radha, who resembles his own spiritual figure and who embodies ecstatic potency, Ladini, their companions. This is the beautiful verse we all know. Ananda, this is the verse of the Prabhupada quotes in Radhasmi lectures. Ananda Chinmay Rasa Pradiva with Avis. Tavirya eva nijarupa taya kalavi goloka eva nivasati akilatma bhutu govinda madhi purusham tamaham bhajami. That Ananda Chamayras is coming from Srimati Radharani, Ladini Potency. And that's what dear Ramananda Rai is describing in this particular point. The supreme ecstasy of Srimati Radharani is the essence of spiritual life. Our only business is to fulfill all the desires of Krishna. Srimati Radharani is the topmost spiritual gem. And other gopis, Lalta, Vishaka, and so on, are expansions of our spiritual body. So, three, all the energies. So, Krishna is called cause of all causes. Radharani is called cause of all consorts. 
All the Lakshmis are called partial expansions of Srimad Radharani. All the um, queens of Dwarka are called, um, called uh, I forget, uh, um, I think uh, not partial, but uh, expansion of Radharani. Mm. So, expansion of Srimad Radharani. And gopis are direct manifestations of Radharani. These are three different uh, ways Radharani is expanding as different concerts. The gopis, Raja gopis, uh, and then the Dwaraka queens, Mahishis, Mahishi Gan, Dwaraka queens, and then the Lakshmis. All are expansions of Srimati Radharani. Srimati Radharani is his transcendental body is uh, brilliant in luster and full of all transcendental fragrances. Lord Krishna's affection for her is like a perfumed massage. Srimati Radharani takes her first bath in the shower of nectar of compa compassion. She takes her second bath in the nectar of youth. Uh, uh, Srimad Radharani's affection for Krishna is her upper garment, which is pinkish in color. She then covers, uh, composed and of affection and anger towards Krishna. Srimad Radharani's personal beauty is reddish powder known as kumkum. Uh, so her affection of her associate is sandalwood pulp. The sweetness of her smile is camphor. All these combined together are smeared over her body. Uh, conjugal love for Krishna is abundance of mask. With that mask, her bo whole body is decorated. Uh, her attachment for Krishna is a reddish color of beetle nuts. The ornaments on decorating her body are the blazing ecstasies of goodness and constantly existing ecstasy headed by jubilation. Also, ornamenting her body are the 12, 20 kinds of ecstatic symptoms beginning with Kilak Kinchita, or a transcendental qualities constitute the flower garland hanging in fullness over her body. The Tilaka of good fortune is on, on her beautiful broad forehead. Her various loving affairs are jam. Her heart is a locket. Srimad Radharani's gopi friends are her many uh, mental activities, which are concentrated on the past times of Sri Krishna. She keeps her hand on the shoulder of a friend who represents youth. Uh, she, Radharani's bedstead is a pride itself and is situated in the abode of her bodily aroma. She is always seated there thinking of Krishna's association. Srimad Radharani's earrings are the name, fame and qualities of Lord Krishna. The glories of Lord Krishna's name, fame, qualities are always inundating our speech. This is a tan nama rupa charitadi supirtamam, nama rupa guna lila. These things will manifest in one when one is chanting the holy name in Suddhanam. Automatically manifest without external endeavor to see the Lord's picture. Uh, to read past times, it will manifest while we are chanting. These things will manifest when we come to the pure stage. Just like we think of a close friend or close family member, we immediately remember. So mind will bring the form in front of us. Mind will remember their qualities, their past times, what we have done together with the friend. So like that, same way. Because we don't have that full knowledge, the truth about Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, uh, so that's why these things are not ma being manifested when we are chanting. We have to come to that stage by the association of the pure devotees, uh, uh, mercy of the pure devotees to spiritual master. So that then we can actually um, taste or we can see this Nama Rupa Vila. If one asks about the origin of love of Krishna, the answer is that the origin is in Srimadhi Radharani alone. Who is the most dear friend of Krishna? The answer again is Srimad Radharani alone. No one else. Srimad Radharani's hair is very curly. Her two eyes are always moving to and fro. Since all transcendental qualities are manifested in Srimad Radharani, she alone is able to fulfill all the desires to Krishna. No one else. Even Satyabhama, one of the queens of Sri Krishna, desires the fortunate position and excellent qualities of Srimad Radharani. All the gopis learn the art of dressing from Srimad Radharani. Even the goddess of virtue, Lakshmi, and the wife of Lord Shiva Parvati desire her beauty and qualities. Indeed, Arundhati, the celebrated chaste wife of Vasishta, also want to imitate the chastity and religious principles of Srimad Radharani. Even Lord Krishna himself cannot reach the limit of transcendental quality of Srimad Radharani. How then can an insignificant living entity count them? See that. Krishna is described as 64 qualities, full in full. Radharani is described also as 64 qualities. Hmm? It is uh, interesting to know. Hmm? So that it is also, uh, it is, uh, everything is inconceivable. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is telling that uh, in 7th chapter, 26 verse or 27th verse, Vedaham Samadhitani Vartamanani Chajana Bhavishyani Chabhutani Mamtu Vedana Kachana No one knows me. Uh, 
uh, in truth. Uh, no one knows in truth. But here, <laughs> Krishna is telling that uh, uh, he, he cannot know even uh, the limit of Sri Mother Radharani. Uh, so, about Krishna, we can know. No one knows. But here, Krishna is also has that quality to trying to understand Sri Mother Radharani's love or feelings of affection or happiness or ecstasies. Uh, see that. We are attracted to Krishna, but Krishna is attracted to someone else. We are desiring to understand Krishna, but Krishna is trying to understand someone else. So it is inconceivable and uh, interesting to know these uh, things. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, Now I have come to understand the truth of the loving appeal between Radha and Krishna. Nonetheless, I still want to hear how both of them gloriously enjoy such love. Then Ramananda Raya replied, Lord Krishna is dear or Lalita, but he can always keep his girlfriend in a subjugated state. Thus, his only business to you know, enjoy. A person who is very cunning and always youthful, expert in joking without anxiety, who can keep her girlfriends always subjugated, is called dear or Lalita. That is Radharani. Uh, so, thus Lord Krishna spoke of activities. Uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, this is all right, please continue. It further goes uh, so beyond, beyond our uh, comprehension, but let me show the uh, pictures of uh, the these places. Yavad, uh, Varsana, Rishabhanu Maharaj, so that uh, yeah. Srimad Radharani is uh, Murti in Lordly Mandir in Varsana, Raval, Mukhavali. And this is the temple of the Lordly Mandir. There, Varsana, where she is the most magnanimous, most merciful, most compassionate. She is worshipped by all. She is the dear most to all these um, Varsana Vasis, Vrindavan Vasis. We call Radhe Radhe. That's why. And this is the uh, picture of, uh, of Rishabhanu Maharaj. So, in that Lordly Mandir, and this is the temple. And a closer look, Varsana Dham. Varsana Dham ki jai, Shri Radha Syam Sundar ki jai, Prashabhan Mandir Nadrani ki jai. And this is the place of Yavat. I couldn't get time to take the pictures of it. It is mentioned that in Yavat, uh, this is a temple, uh, Radha Radha Kamta deities. In the Varsana and Lordly Mandir, um, Vajrana, Lord Krishna's grandson, established the deities. Uh, I forget the Radha Gopijan no, or some other name is the deities. But in the Yavat, it is Radha Radha Kanta, deities are there. So hopefully, some other time we will show the pictures. Uh, we will end with the uh, song and then we can take questions or comments, corrections. Much more glories are there. I, I didn't go over to the uh, Gopal Champu to describe that beautiful pastime, or I didn't go the pram. There are so many pramanas, hundreds and thousands of pramanas, and observance also there is a pramana. Observance of Radhashtami, don't ever, don't miss it, and don't miss the service. Radhashtami, we are planning to offer 500 plus items on Radhashtami day in the evening, 6.30 to 6 to 9 is the program, 6 to 7 Kirtan, 8 to 9 is Abhishek, please don't miss it. We will have Abhishek outside, we will have Abhishek inside also on the altar. Uh, try to bring offerings, lotus flower offering is there, please grab a lot of flower for offering uh, and cook some items, dry items, uh, preferably uh, you can bring from your home, following the Vaishnava standard, with the clean, you know, tying the hair and all that, cutting the nails before, so chanting some few rounds at least, so uh, these are the general standard. Uh, so the, because innumerable glories and Radha asked me anyone who is observing, it's uh, more than thousands of ekadasis and thousands of austerities. It, it, there is no comparison for one who observes Radha asked me, one who serves, one who um, performs austerities on this day. And so, so many glories are described in various Puranas. So that's why it is very important for us to Worship and pray sincerely, wake up early in the morning and chant the holy names of the Lord uh, sincerely and try to attend Mangalati. All these things are very, very prominent and important to do on this day. Uh, this is Friday, so we can take day off or half day or at least attend morning and then go to office, come back early or something like that, whatever possible. So we will sing a song and we will take questions.
राधे जय जय मे राधे जय जय मे गोकुल तरुणी मंडल महिते गोकुल तरुणी मंडल महिते राधे जय जय मे राधे जय जय मे वृषभानुदादी नवस सिरे के ललित सखी गुण रमित विशाखी वृषभानुदादी नवस सिरे के ललित सखी गुण रमित विशाखी राधे जय जय मे राधे जय जय मे करुणा कुरु मई करुणावरी ते सनक सनातन वनीत चरी ते करुणा कुरु मई करुणावरी ते सनक सनातन वनीत चरी ते राधे जय जय मे राधे जय जय मे गोकुल तरुणी मंडल महिते गोकुल तरुणी मंडल महिते राधे जय जय मे राधे जय जय मे राधे जय जय मे दामोदर रति वर्धन वे से हरिने स्कृत वृंदा विपिने से हरिने स्कृत वृंदा विपिने से राधे जय जय मे वृषभानुदादी नमस सिले खे ललित सखी गुण रमित विशाखे राधे जय जय मे राधे जय जय मे करुणा कुरु मई करुणावरी ते सनक सनातन वनीत चरी ते करुणा कुरु मई करुणावरी ते सनक सनातन वनीत चरी ते राधे जय जय मे गोकुल तरुणी मंडल महिते राधे जय जय मे दामोदर रति वर्धन वे से हरिने स्कृत वृंदा विपिने से हरिने स्कृत वृंदा विपिने से राधे जय जय मे राधे जय जय मे वृषभानुदादी नमस सिले के ललित सखी गुण रमित विशाखी वृषभानुदादी नमस सिले के ललित सखी गुण रमित विशाखी राधे जय जय मे करुणा कुरु मई करुणा भरी ते सनक सनातन वनीत चरी ते 
करुणाम कुरुमयी करुणावरी ते सनक सनातन वनीत चरीते राधे जय जय माधव दईते राधे जय जय माधव दईते रीड द ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ ब्यूटीफुल सॉन्ग दिस इज द वर्स रिटन बाय श्री रूप गोस्वामी श्री चैतन्य मनोविष्ट स्थापित मेन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मैं तदा स्वागता ृंदावनाजर that's a damodara rati increasing the that's what our duty is to actually uh, give the pleasure to guru and krishna that is our duty to give pleasure not so much to yes initially maybe but gradually we have to improve our services improve our chanting improve everything is to give pleasure to krishna and guru because guru is asking okay chant the holy name 16 rounds come to 16 rounds chant nicely attentively worship the deity worship nicely without offenses uh, with clean externally clean internally clean try to so in every of these situation it is it is guru's instruction that means because we have to develop love out of love we should do initially maybe duty but later on gradually it has to increase to damodar rati shrimad radharani is teaching guru is teaching all of us to come to that kind of consciousness in everything what we do in bhakti in devotion service is has to be done with this kind of prati attachment affection greed to actually give pleasure to krishna when we cook when we dress when we sing when we offer anything to the lord it has to be done with this kind of mood that's what is the first we are getting the lesson from this verse first verse as we see that damodar rati vardhana vese hari niskuta vrindha vipnese that's what it means Number two, oh new moon that has arisen from the ocean of King Vrishabhanu, because Vrishabhanu Maharaj's daughter, Lordly, oh friend of Lalita, oh you who make Vishaka loyal to you due to your wonderful qualities of friendliness, kindness, and faithfulness to Krishna, Vrishabhanu Dadi, Navasa se lekar Lalita Sakiguna Ramita Vishaka, she has a trust and love and faith. So the Guru has trust and faith on us. at the time of initiation we are offering ourselves uh, so we should keep that faith and trust uh, on guru as well is mutual always love is not one sided surrender is not one sided is both uh, guru is accepting out of compassion cause radharani is accepting lalita and vishaka so and all all of us through guru through this pure devotees so we should accept we should do in the trust and faith and cooperate and sir the guru in that way uh, so as we can see that he already mentioned the friendship quality of friendliness kindness faithfulness and this is a madhyam adhikari stage so we have to come from kanishtha adhikari to madhyam adhikari isura tadadina balishesh dishasya krupa maitru peksha this has been described here one must be friendly to the same level of devotees one must be eager to associate with those who are advanced and one must be those who are envious stay a little bit distance from them because we are not uttam adhikari we can't preach to them we can maybe give prasad and if they like to but if they are going to throw or inimical to that also better not to give uh, so these are the instruction rupa goswami and rupa the describing of madhyam adhikari stage as it is described here friendliness kindness faithfulness they are the topmost but we are getting our our level lessons through these songs and it is described also when sorry lord krishna entering into mathura he meets various personalities cloth man washer man various personalities one of them is the most important lesson we get in that is the last one is a garland maker sudama not the same sudama vipra this is another sudama garland maker sudama beautiful lesson he comes forward offers obeisance with full prostrated with so much love and intense affection 
is asking the Lord, Oh my Lord, please order me. What can I do? This is the mood. Hmm? This devotee, Sudam Vipra, is teaching us in what mood we should engage every day. What should be our mood? In chanting, in service, in worship, everything. This should be the mood. What can I do to please? We should be eager. That so much eager he is. And the Lord is very pleased. Then immediately he offered beautiful garlands. Lord is, uh, Lord is looking for that and automatically this devotee understood the desire because Mahaprabhu, Maha, Paramatma is there, Mahaprabhu is there giving mercy. Krishna is there seeing the heart. How much intense desire to serve me is there. Automatically things will manifest, reveal through Guru. It will be revealed. This is my desire. This is how you, I want you to serve me. That will be manifested. Otherwise, we will like to do, I like to do this, I like to No, it is not what we like. It is Guru what he likes. How he wants us to serve. In what way he wants us to serve. What, how Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityana Prabhu wants us to serve. In what way. This should be always. That's why prayers has to be there. Otherwise, we are thinking always, I like to do this, I like to do that. But it's not. This is a, this is a um, separatist mentality. This is individuality. So, Bhakti is not about this. Bhakti is about what Guru wants, what Krishna wants, what Lord wants. This is always. That is the uh, dependent nature. That's what um, uh, that devotee Sudham Vipra is teaching that. In that mood, one must serve. Then he offered beautiful garlands and he offered beetle nuts, he offered chandan, various things. He offered. Lord was supremely pleased. And then he gave full blessings. Um, he will attain. He will enjoy all the benefits here in this material and he will attain me. And then he submitted, Sudam Vipra further submitted, I want the association of your devotees, I want friendship with all your devotees, I want to be compassionate to all people, like three or four things, these are very prominent. And we see that, uh, Lalita and Vishaka, Srimad Radharani are teaching us that this is the quality a devotee should pray for, friendship to all devotees and uh, compassion to all people, all living entities. So that means we should avoid criticism, we should avoid fault finding. This mentality always comes in the forefront. We should avoid that. Uh, so because if you are friendly and compassionate, generally we will not do that. But otherwise this will come in the forefront. Amanina manadena, giving respect to everybody else and not expect respect. It's not easy, but it will, these qualities will develop when we are always associating, always avoiding, always hearing from Prabhupada and spiritual master what he wants us to do, how we should be observed, uh, observe ourselves, conduct ourselves. Is Guru happy with me? What I am conducting? How am I conducting? Check our weaknesses regularly. Uh, when we are putting telak, when we are chanting, we should reflect what, what I am, how am I observing myself? How am I conducting myself? What can I rectify? What faults I have? What behaviors I can, I have to rectify? These things have to be considered. Then we can come to this quality, the friendliness, kindness, faithfulness. Otherwise, we are always uh, anything other than Krishna only we are doing, which is not so good. So, next, third verse. Uh, oh, you who are filled with compassion. Oh, you whose divine characteristics are described with great sages, Sanaka and Sanatan. Oh, Radha, please be merciful unto me. Because people may think that, who is this Sri Matra uh, We know only Krishna. So that's why Prabhupada Goswami is giving that this is not ordinary people. This is not, um, the Radharani is not ordinary person. She is the topmost, she is uh, not different from Krishna. And who has said this? He is giving the Pramana. Sanaka and Sanatan. Sanaka and Sanatan. Sanandana. Sana, Sanat Kumar. Four Kumaras. Who are never married. Who never want anything to do with this material world. When Lord Brahma produced ten sons out of first one, four Kumaras, they never want to, then Lord Brahma became angry. He, you know, they did but I said, we want to, just, not only want to get, not want to marry, we want to stay as a same child, children, small babies. We have nothing to do with this material law. We only want to engage in the world service. So that is how, they are, that's why they are very famous. Prudu Maharaj, they appear in Prudu Maharaj's kingdom. They give instruction to Prudu Maharaj. Lord says, I am pleased with your service. Now, you know, that means when one is when the Lord is pleased, then Guru will appear in their life. Guru will appear in this life. 
and you know, and Lord is Paradap is Guru. Lord will arrange so many situations that you constantly is in the service of Guru and Krishna, and you will get direct instruction from Guru also. When Lord is pleased, further and pleased, our humility is there, humbleness is there, gratitude is there, service mentality is there, eagerness is there. Then Lord is seeing what is there, what quality we have. Repeatedly we will get instructions, we will get services, we will get um, Guru's mercy. These things will happen, naturally it will happen, it comes. That's how the four Kumaras are teaching us. That's how four Kumaras appeared in the assembly of Purutu. Because Lord is supremely pleased how he treated every living entity in his kingdom. Poshana, Palana, Prinana. This is what Buddha Maharaj did, three, time, three things. Poshana. He makes sure that maintaining not only his, his family members, we maintained everybody else. The whole kingdom has his own kinsman. Poshana, he maintained them. He protected them. He makes sure that they are following their dharma, what they are supposed to do. And he maintained them. He nourished them. Poshana, Palana. He protected them and instructed them what to do, what not to do. And then um, uh, Poshana, and, um, Palana. Palana is the first one. Poshana is nourishing them again, material and spiritually. And Prinana with great love. And he used to encourage them. He used to inspire them. He used to glorify them, what they are good at. So this should be there. That's why we have to be in the association of those who are dedicated their life to Guru and Krishna. Those who are inspiring us by being in their association. By that in this way, Sanakanda Santropa Goswami is giving us indication that we must serve, we must hear, we must see this pramana like this, Sanakanda Sanatana. And uh, get the mercy from them by praying to these personalities. And then we can understand Tattva of Radharani. Otherwise, it's uh, impossible to understand the Tattva of Srimad Radharani. So, that is the translation. Always we have to read. No parrot reading. We can sing songs, but we don't know what does it mean. Then uh, it doesn't benefit us, actually. We get to the mercy, but that's not what we want. We want full mercy, no? So, that's why we have to really know um, the meaning and depths. We have to enter into the meaning. Prabhupada repeatedly told. When you are in front of Guru and Prabhupada, you chant Guru Charana Padman Kevala Bhakati Sabman. But enter into the deep meaning of what it means. Enter into that art and understand it and follow it. That is the real essence of Bhakti. Is not, don't stay as an external periphery. Go, in, go deep within. Then you will get the actual uh, real relishment, the bliss, the ecstasy we will get. Otherwise, uh, you can't get the real ecstasy. It is not available. For those who are next to periphery, it can be, it is not possible. So, yeah, with that, we will stop here. Let's see if there are any questions, comments, corrections. Go ahead. If anyone has, let us offer respect to all the devotees. Vancha Kalpadara Bhesya Krupa Sindhu Bhevacha Patita Nam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namon Vaishnavi Go ahead. Any? Questions, comments, reflections. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, then we pinam all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Yes, Mother, Suman Mother, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Prabhuji, uh, uh, Radha, uh, Radha has to me we have to observe only till afternoon or we have to do it for the whole day, Prabhuji? Interesting question. Uh, it is a contradictory question or, contradic or uh, maybe it may bring contradiction. So, I will say a few things. Let me see. Uh, let us offer our obeisance. Alto Shil Bhakti Charasura Maras is a Vyas Puja day. So, we we'll offer obeisance to him, Maras as well. So, wonderful question. You mentioned again, Prabhupada instruction is there. Uh, in his Radhastami uh, lecture or in other lectures I read personally, he mentioned the fasting until noon at least. And in Bhakti Siddhanta time, fasting full day was there. Prabhupada obviously, you know, is seeing our condition, seeing our situation, Prabhupada reduced it. I think now I have to look at the calendar. Um, there is no fasting. I think. Again, Srimad Radhastami is very merciful. Many times, like when at the day of initiation, by our spiritual masters. We are supposed to fast, even on the appearance day of Guru, Vyas Puja day, also supposed to fast, at least till noon. Many times Guru may say that, sometimes Guru says, okay, you can take, you don't need to fast. 
If Guru says, then you can take it. So that's what you know, Prabhupada says, then it's okay. Very mercifully agreed. Then on that order, yes, you don't need to fast. But uh, there is no nothing wrong in fasting. Rather, the highest benedictions are there from Padma Purana and many others. So officially, no fasting in that sense. Or if you want to fast, fast until noon and then grain prasad is there. But if you ask me unofficially, personally, one to one, then I would say that yeah, you can fast. It is rather uh, mentioned almost like Krishna fasting, Ekadasi fasting until next day. That's why it has been mentioned. But you, you don't need to do that. Only if, uh, if you think you can do it, uh, you like to do personally. No, this is not an official instruction. Don't quote me <laughs> uh, that I have told this. Uh, it's not on the calendar, so don't ask me. Uh, so I'm telling on my personal thing what I have uh, read. But Prabhupada is merciful, so that's why he allowed uh, no fasting or fasting till noon. But in Padma Puran, it's clearly given. Thousands of Ekadasis are not even compare, comparison, the result of fasting on this day, like Narsimhi Chaturthasi, Radhaastami, Janmaastami, so that is the comparison given. So many uh, um, significances are given for observing Radhaastami festival. By chanting, by doing service also, it is, uh, significance is there. So, um, hundreds and thousands of times benefit is there. Especially if you are in Holy Dham, it's even more. So, so that's why we should take this day very, very carefully and uh, follow it through and do some service uh, to the Lord and offer something and also serve Vaishnavas. Uh, avoid unwanted things, avoid um, criticism, avoid fault finding, avoid offensing, offenses to the devotees or the deities. So that will help us because she's more merciful. doesn't mean that we can do whatever we like. So it will not be pleasing to her. So that's why we should try to avoid, try to do what pleases her on that day especially. So that will be, just like you go to birthday of any friend or family member, you like to do what pleases them. So for Radharani, it pleases you want, if you are compassionate. If you are compassionate, why will you criticize someone? You will not criticize someone. So so that that's what it is. Is that okay, Mataji? Yes, Prabhuji. And one more question is uh, here. Yeah. Uh, like uh, tomorrow is uh, Tej. Many of people do uh, for the, uh, you know, uh, good health and everything for their husband. So I, my question is, uh, uh, like uh, yesterday only I was reading one book and there it was mentioned that sacrifice is only done, uh, is only given for the, those who are not devotee of Krishna. So uh, doing austerity or, the uh, or you know, observing fast for any people, uh, like a husband or for kids. So, uh, I, what you suggest, Prabhuji, what should be the ideal thing to be done like that? Different it's... things are mentioned in the Shastra by Chetan Mahaprabhu. Chetan Mahaprabhu himself is in one sense, for devotee, there is no need to do worship, sadha ceremony, all this, in one sense. Because you are worshipping Krishna, you are serving devotees, that itself is a merit. We can chant on their name, we can offer on their name our merits by worshipping deity or, or offering uh, or serving devotees, serving prasad to devotees or various things or parikrama of Tulsi, whatever we do, we can offer on parents' name or grandparents' name or somebody extra things we do and we can offer. No problem. Our spiritual master also we can do. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed by his own example when his father left the body, he went to Gaya uh, for different purposes. One is to offer you know, oblations and sacrifices sacrifice for his father. So, and he's teaching this dharma has to be done. We should obviously do it. It is for the benefit. Why not do it? Nothing wrong in doing it. Obviously, if you are fully attached, like if you are like Madhavendra Puri, for him, he doesn't need to do. No Sandhya Vanda, nothing. He said, I am always chanting. Please forgive me for not able to do all these rules and regulations. Because he is above beyond the rules. He is a pure devotee. But we are at the uh, lower stage, at least me. So, it is better to follow the general instructions or tradition of Vedic culture, which is following the start of the ceremony. Um, so, for the, but the best way is to serve Vaishnavas, feed Vaishnavas, and serve the deity on their name. That is the best benefit uh, one can give. More than so much uh, igna or different pujas, people may do elaborately, but better than that is this. 
there the Mahaprabhu taught that in when he went to Gaya. He circumvented, he, he took the you know food dust, uh, the water bathed, uh, the dust of the Brahmanas, whatever he drank to relieve his fever, and then he met Iswarapuri, Sri Iswarapuri Maharaj, Madhavendra, Sri Madhavendra Puri disciples, Madhav. So he was initiated at that time. Then Chitra Mahaprabhu circumvented Sri Iswarapuri because this is called a Bhagavati Bhuti, Parabhakti, this is called. Spiritual master is non different from Krishna. Lord Krishna is like, so we have to, when we see the spiritual master, we should see it as, as good as the Lord. I Means so much reverence must be there. We must have so much intense love for him. And we must have that eagerness to serve him and please him at any cost. So that, that, that's how, that's why he offered obeisances. He, he, he did production of his Puri. And he mentioned many things. Very important. In Chaitanya Bhagavad, this is there. One of the Madhikanda or Antikanda, I forget. Last chapter. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visiting Gaya. That is a chapter title. I don't have the book in front of me, but a beautiful description of this wonderful pastime. A lot of lessons to learn how to conduct ourselves, uh, what to do and what not to do. He did the production, he told that, that meeting you has no comparison in this whole world of meeting such an exalted personality, pure devote Mahabhagavat and circumvulating you, offering anything in your service, just seeing you itself, all my forefathers, everybody is delivered. I don't even need to do after oblations, anything. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, saying many verses like that, describing the glory of a exalted person and the spiritual master. As Pali Puri is not an ordinary, even pure devotees of the various levels, so, such so exalted personality. So, so that is the lesson. So, there is a general instruction of doing oblations, sacrifices, stop the ceremonies. But the, for devotees, more so, we worship at the temple, we offer, we serve devotees, Sunday feast or any feast or Raj Bhav, like that, we sponsor, or in the Holy Dham, Gurnavan, Mayapur, like that. So that is the best way to observe, best way to give the credit to, on the name of uh, our fathers, or grandfathers, and any of the festivals, Radhashtami, Rasengi Chaturthasi, Janmashtami, on these days, we can offer on their name. Around Ekadasi days, there are many temples on Ekadasi days, a special um, serving prasadam on uh, previous uh, father's grandfather's name. So, all these things are very good for their benefit. Is that clear, Mataji? Yes, Prabhuji, thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, thank you so much for the wonderful nectar of Radhanai's pastime. Thank you for the discussion. Okay. Prabhuji, uh, Radharani likes Arabi. What else she likes again we can make for to offer her? Yeah, many things are there. So I haven't personally read, but I heard so, uh, that uh, boar, a bear, so, yeah, the fruit, the Arabi is for sure is there and the Goa is there. So these are some of the things we heard. But obviously she's cooking every day new, new things. But these are some of the things we heard. And whatever uh, whatever Guru likes, spiritual magic like, whatever Prabhupada likes, likes uh, so we can offer also those things because uh, so the pleasing to Guru is pleasing to Srimad Radharani because they are direct representatives of Srimad Radharani. Anything we are trying to please any of her expansions, then she gets pleasure. So, yeah, in that way, Prabhupada likes many, many items. So we can offer those items as well, along with uh, whatever we can. Arbi is for sure, plum is for plum is there. Uh, so and boar is there. These three things are pretty much uh, most of the devotees know. Definitely we can. Radha Vallabhi is another item. Kachori made with urad dal. These are some of the things we have heard from scriptures and various acharyas. I don't have personal. Means I don't have the references, exact reference. Don't ask me for the reference. I have to look where exactly. But we have some references for in terms of the colors, uh, red ruby, sari, uh, some of the stones, some of the colors uh, she likes to wear. Uh, Krishna likes to see her in that particular color dress or something. Those things I have read references, but I haven't seen the references yet for the exact uh, items what Radharani likes. If I find, I will uh, let you know. 
but at least we can go by the statements uh, from what we heard from in our disciplic succession, these items were all analyzed. So we can definitely offer those items. Okay, Prabhupada. Thank you, sir. Hare Krishna. No other questions, we can conclude. Okay, thank you all for your association. Okay, so Prabhu, you have a question? If not, we will conclude. Yes, Prabhuji. Go ahead. Prabhuji, you mentioned a very, very important point that um, we have to not do services by our own, but rather rely upon Guru so as to get the actual understanding about what different service do we want to do. So for many uh, times, we may not have direct association of the Guru. So how should you, how, how should one person try and understand from the instructions, various different instructions of the Guru that yes, this is the exact service that I should be taking up. Is it just based upon inspiration or uh, are there specific clues that we should look out for? Yeah, important question, good question. Actually. Yes, definitely we have to hear regularly from spiritual master. And then there are general instructions because the Guru cannot give direct personal instructions to many because for many different reasons. Because it's not good for disciple. If he gives instruction, if he doesn't follow, then it's, it's not good for devotee. So we have to hear and we have to note down many general instructions what Guru says. But the inspiration will come from the heart as you mentioned. When you submit, uh, when you are sincere, then Lord will inspire. So, But we also hear from the Guru servants. That is the best way to serve. Guru may not give direct instruction, but if you serve Guru, uh, so representatives, Guru has many representatives, especially those who are uh, seriously trying to please Guru and taking his instruction directly and serving. So by being in association with them, by being in touch with them, by understanding what Guru wants us to do, uh, what Guru likes us to do in our services, obviously in another way, Shastra is also tells that Deity, the deity is the Guru's Sakshad Arityana, Sri Vigraha Radhana Nityana. Guru is always worshipping the deity. Sometimes because sometimes we jump when Guru is there or when Guru is in some other place, uh, we neglect the you know whatever service we have, we jump. No, one or two can go. Okay, if all of you can go also, but still the worship the deity because deity is uh, installed by the spiritual master. He is the one who established in the deity Pranapatista. So it's not different from him. He wants that service to continue. Guru never wants, one way Prabhupada said, I want my devotee, the best instruction, I want him to become a pure devotee. That is a key instruction also Prabhupada said. He obviously likes to do book teaching, many other things, but he also said, I want you to become a pure devotee. I want you to sincerely chant, nicely chant, nicely worship the deity. Everything has to be nicely done. That's what Prabhupada wants. So always Guru wants our service is to be done with attentively, with care and attention, which means serving Vaishnava, serving the deity, serving Sri Prabhupada. So we don't need to explicitly look for particular direct instruction, but this in general instruction is always there. But if you still want further explicit instruction, then either you can write and or whenever you meet Guru, you can ask, but it's up. he may or may not give. But we have to accept. If he doesn't give, don't bother him again and don't, uh, you know, cry or do something. Uh, so just accept it because it is not time. Time is not right. We are not qualified yet. We just accept it. But we have to go by his representatives. Guru's representative for sure. They know what Guru wants us to do. And they will instruct. They will give us what Guru likes in terms of the cooking items or in terms of the services. What exactly Guru wants us to do. Then we can get. Uh, or he, go, he may ask Guru, okay, this particular devotee is asking, what can he do? This is what I suggested. Maybe any other thing, is that is that okay or any other suggestion? So then he may bring more further instructions so, by conforming with Guru. So that also is there. So generally this is the way, even in proper time also, that's how it is done. Many of the devotees used to approach Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj and other sannyasi disciples uh, because many times Prabhupada was not available or Prabhupada in some other place, uh, so, and they became, initially, Prabhupada was very much available, but um, as the movement grew on, Prabhupada was very busy, a lot of things he has to accomplish, so at that time, many sannyasi disciples used to uh, 
used to serve, used to help in Prabhupada, assisting Prabhupada on behalf of Prabhupada, they used to uh, respond, reply, give instructions, give services. So, yeah, that's how, that's what I understood. Is that clear? Yes, okay. yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Sure, Krishna. Amrutam Prabhu, or someone else? Yeah, go ahead, Amrutam Prabhu. 